Eric, what exactly are the benefits of fetal stem cells and how many different versions of stem cell therapy are there? Sure. Um, the benefits for, it's a, it's a complicated one. So, and I'm always going to, like I have been answering every question, I have to kind of start from the beginning. So all stem cells do are they regenerate. So you and I, as we're sitting here, they're, they're, we're, they're working on stuff right now. Um, I think somebody once said we wouldn't live an hour if it weren't for our own stem cells. So like if you sprain your ankle, cut your hand, whatever, those are your stem cells partially coming out to regenerate that injury. And of course, even if you're not injured, you know, this is like sort of your body's defense mechanism against you name it. So obviously that beautiful thing that we have in us, what a great idea for a therapy if you can figure out how to manipulate that. So, but you know, the first stem cell therapy ever created was actually the bone marrow transplant. This is actually stem cells, that's all it is. It's just taking entire bone marrow, because by the way, a lot of our stem cells are laying dormant in our bone marrow. So when you get sick or whatever, there's often your stem cells are coming out of your bone marrow and just going it throughout your body. So I'm gonna get to fetal, I promise, but so you have, you have bone marrow transplantation, right? Now what's interesting is, even though adult stem cell, there's, okay, there's adult, which they take it from you, and then they give it back to you after they waken them up. You have umbilical cord stem cells, which can be done in a host of different ways. You either save them at birth for your kid, maybe you access them later, or there's a lot of people trying to do clinical trials and other organizations where they're giving umbilical to other people that aren't necessarily your umbilical cord. You have embryonic stem cells, which I can get into in a minute, which are highly dangerous and are often confused with fetal, not in the same room as fetal, but they sound similar, not the same. And you have like so many other stem cell types out there. Um, like then you have something called amniotic, from the amniotic fluid. They're not stem cells, by the way. You'll see ads for them. You'll see them in magazines. They're freeze-dried, dead amniotic product that they wake up or they, you know, they thaw out and they stick into you. They have some decent results, but you're not gonna turn Parkinson's around with it or anything like that. But anyway, it's just important to spring that up because it's not a stem cell at all, but they love putting stem cells after it because most of the public doesn't understand what the heck a stem cell is to begin with. So it's really easy to manipulate people and when they don't know what their hell they're looking at. And again, that's kind of part of my job again with this space is to help people understand that. So while I did focus on fetal, I spent a lot of time helping people understand the differences of the types why some are quote unquote better than others and why some have more limitations than others and why fetal in my opinion is sort of like this, uh, like, like the Rolls Royce in the parking lot surrounded by horse and buggies as I had mentioned earlier. Um, so if you have a sports injury say, adult stem cells where they take it from your fat or your bone marrow and they wake them up and give them back to you, you have some, something wrong with I mean that's probably some good results. A lot of sports stars get it, but yeah, remember if I am 46, so if I underwent adult stem cell therapy, they're taking out my 46 year old stem cells from my blood, basically, it's just blood cells. They wake them up and they, you have to hope that they become a muscle cell for my sprain or whatever. Or let's say I had a heart issue. You have to hope your 46 year old blood stem cell becomes a heart cell or a brain cell or whatever your ailment might be. Um, and that's the same goes for uh, umbilical, except that's only nine months old versus, you know, your, your age. Um, but with fetal, harvested at end of first trimester, I know it's, it's, it's uh, hard for people to wrap their head around, but one of the 50 million uh, voluntary abortions on the planet every year, um, that's where they come from. Um, you're getting brain cells, liver cells, heart cells, you're getting the whole package. And, um, so to, I'll, I'll get to efficacy in a minute, but because they're capable at the time when they're harvested in this case of not experiencing a genetic rejection, you think, oh my gosh, you're putting foreign DNA in you, your body's just gonna kick that right out. Not with fetal taken at the right time of gestation. That's why adult works, because it's taken it from you, giving it back to you. Um, umbilical cord, they're experimenting with that, but there are a lot of people getting sick from experimenting with somebody else's umbilical cord, giving it to some other adult. So, but for whatever reason, these guys have figured it out that at the end of first trimester, um, there's no genetic, re, re, there's no rejection. And um, because of that, if, promised, if harvested properly, the, you can imagine the difference in results of positive results with fetal for a myriad of diseases versus adult or something else. Um, since we're on this tangent here, 
fetal is like a void. Like you, you go to Google, and you type in fetal, and you'll get embryonic. Um, you'll watch a documentary about stem cells. You won't find fetal. You'll read books about it. Where's fetal? If you don't know about fetal, you won't know. You would never know it even existed. You'll have articles that think they're talking about fetal, but it's actually embryonic because most journalists don't understand it. Most journalists are just doing their job. They got the next assignment. Oh, I got to do a thing about this stem cell thing. Uh, you know, and they do it. And they do a good job as much as they could, but they don't have the experience that I have and certainly not of a scientist has to understand a very complicated, convoluted, and up-and-coming technology. So fetal, embryonic. Embryonic cell is a five-day-old blastocyst grown in a Petri dish in a lab by taking a sperm and an egg and putting it together. There's no organs being formed. It's a five-day-old blastocyst. It doesn't even really know, really, what, where it's going. You know what I mean? A fetal stem cell, when harvested when properly, already has organs. It's just like a thing, right? An embryonic cell, five days old, fetal, seven to 12 weeks. Embryonic has been known repeatedly. There are some people using it, not in America, not on any wide scale, but you can go to Tijuana, you can go to all kinds of places to get this. People have been known to grow teratomas. It's a non-cancerous tumor. A lot of weird stuff will grow in you if you get injected with embryonic stem cells. It's not funny, but, but you're talking about something that's like a few cells that you're putting into another human being. Are you insane? Like, you know, who, who, you have no idea what's going to happen. But it sounds fancy, right? So uh, I'm getting off track here. But anyway, but fetal is not that. It is separate. The media gets confused by the two. And that's kind of part of the reason why I, had, I wanted to do this movie to kind of help clear that air. In my personal opinion, my humble opinion, not being a doctor, not being a scientist, just a journalist, living in this space for five years, I've never seen results in any other stem cell type like I've seen in fetal. And when you understand the mechanism of action, you understand where they come from, you understand why, it makes absolutely logical sense. So if you have brain damage or you have a stroke or whatever, and you get fetal cells with neuronal cells and you have improvement, you understand why that happens. While the same patient may have gotten an adult and has no improvement. Well, because the adult cells didn't have any neuronal cells, and of course you're trying to fix the neuronal, neuronal system, duh, you know what I mean? Same with like, like easy ones like liver disease, you're getting liver cells given to you. Um, I, I don't know if you saw my talk, but the first patient they ever treated before they had a clinic was a kid who had bone marrow failure from a plastic anemia who was living off of blood transfusions um, waiting for a bone marrow transplant just to survive. And he got this because his parents bought radiated milk from a milk farm from Chernobyl, that part of the world. Bone marrow failure, waiting on a bone marrow transplant. And they gave him two rounds of fetal liver cells only. They had not really developed the whole protocol yet. Cured him. He's still alive today. I showed pictures of him you know, in today's talk. So try doing that with adult cells. Try doing that with anything that's stem cell related, except for a bone marrow transplant, which is you need a match, it's highly invasive. You have to bring the body to the brink of death with all these, uh, you know, you have to bring the immune system down so the body will take it. And they just stuck this in this kid's arm. And, you know, I'm not saying that this can replace bone marrow transplants, nor are they. But in this case, it worked because they didn't, they couldn't get one. They didn't have a match. They, you know, they were waiting. So, yeah, that isn't a good example. I mean, again, a lot of these patients, though, that go to M cell and go to get fetal, they've already tried the adult route. They tried all of it. And it didn't work. And they go to M cell and it works, you know. But it doesn't work for everybody. You know, it's not a magic bullet for anything. But that's sort of like the quick overview of the different types and, you know, and why fetal is clearly superior. What's also interesting, too, is when I interviewed the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, these top dog stem cell guys, and I, you know, they were willing to talk openly about their struggles with the FDA and all that. But I bring up fetal, and they're, they're, they've only talked about it off camera. <laughs> And actually, it's funny, um, Carl is a Parkinson's patient who's one of the patients I presented. He might be in my sequel, but I've just kind of been following him on a personal level because we both live in Southern California. He was telling me that he decided to go to like the stem cell meeting thing. I don't know how he found out about it, but he was in the audience of like a bunch of doctors and scientists, and he kind of like sat in the back. Like I think it was with his dad or whatever. And he, he listened to the whole lecture, just like I was saying, not one mention of fetal. They didn't even mention what type of stem cells they're talking about. It was just stem cells can do this and stem cells can do that. Because Carl saw my movie and he knew how to ask the right questions. He just went, okay, what type of stem cells are we talking about? And they're like, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. He goes, what about, uh, okay, which one's the best stem cell? And then no cameras roll. And they go, oh, fetal, clearly fetal. So why aren't we doing fetal? And he said, no one can answer that question. Everybody just sat silent, <laughs> you know? So again, not, I don't really have a conclusion to the story, but, but then he would, he would corner the scientists later and they just, they just kept skirting around it. They just won't, they won't face it. 
And again, it's just one of those, and I think it's just the abortion issue. It's just, uh, you know, but since I talked about that, I want to say it again. 50 million abortions every year. And the, I think the time I've been sitting here almost an hour with you today, or the time I was on that stage, eight or 9,000 fetuses were afforded in the time we've been hanging out, or the time I was on that stage. So there is no shortage of this. And a lot of people love, not a lot of people, some people like to say, oh, you're killing fetuses on purpose. That's how evil. Oh, you know, women are getting pregnant on purpose to get a fetal cell. How absurd. That's not, none of this is possible. <laughs> so it's like, even if you, we ha try to like harvest every fetus possible we can, that was aborted every day, we could never keep up. There are so many of them. It's, I don't mean to talk lightly of it, but the idea, I can't help but to get defensive about it because the idea that anybody would want to get pregnant on purpose to have an abortion is just absurd. Um, the secondly, doing it on purpose in any respect, absurd. Not when you have this overflowing abundance in, our, in this world of this fetal material. It's everywhere. And one of the examples I used was, you know, you could hate abortion. That's your right, but you're not going to stop it. I can hate guns. That's my right. I'm not going to stop guns any day, anytime soon. There's going to be more guns tomorrow than there are today. There's going to be abortions tomorrow than there are today. That's how it is. So uh, guns kill people, but abortions can save lives. Unfortunately, that's just a hard truth, you know. So what's more immoral? Throwing them into the garbage repeatedly or... Whoa, don't put that in the garbage. Let's see this to these clever scientists and see if we can't help somebody with it. It's going to go there anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then take it a step further, because they're in such abundance, the abortion, the, abort the uh, uh, fetal material, if M cell sees anything wrong with it, even if it's a perfectly clean batch of material with all bacteria, no bacteria, no viruses, nothing, if it maybe isn't quite viable enough, maybe it didn't make it over to the lab fast enough, they'll just toss it because they can because there's such an abundance of them. They, they'll toss 40% of them. Just, they don't want, like, ah. So, which also is kind of says a lot because they can pick from the most viable, the most valuable, the most, the greatest possible material they can get their hands on. Um, they don't need to, you know, um, get, you know, less, the, you know, what, what is the I'm look, word I'm looking for? They don't need to, um, you know, go for second best and um, marginalize themselves just to keep their business now. I mean, they're doing fine. You know, they, they got plenty of it flying in. It's unfortunate. Again, I don't mean to talk so lightly about it. No, no, but, I yeah. Like you said, yeah. it's getting thrown away either way. Yeah. For yeah. lack of a better term. So. Yeah.